Let's continue on this important topic now by asking a couple of additional gentlemen to join us. First, Father Dan Maloney, the chaplain at MIT. He joins us from Cambridge, Massachusetts via Google Hangout. And Skyping in from Newsmax, Washington, Wayne Logason, the editorial page editor for the Colorado Springs Gazette. Father Dan, what was your take on what the Pope said to Congress today? Well, I was, I was thrilled with it. This was the, the Pope that I thought we would get to know when he was first elected. Uh, you know, we, the, the media has sort of framed the Pope as being, you know, as by his that comment, who am I to judge? And here we had a talk that I thought was subtle. It, it touched on a lot of different things. It brought in stuff like the devil and hell and original sin, which people were not necessarily expecting this Pope to talk about, as well as the themes that we're familiar with, like the abolition of the death penalty and care for the environment and uh, concern for the poor and the elderly and the and the unborn and those sorts of things were all there. And it was yet it was a bit of rich and tied together. I was I was thrilled with the talk this morning. Wayne, was there anything that you felt the Pope should have touched on more during his address? I do. I, I thought it, I thought the talk was great, and he spoke with better precision, I think, than he has in the past. He talked about, he told Congress about the need, you know, that the golden rule, part of the golden rule, is to respect and defend human life at all stages of development. And I think that was a great thing for them to hear, it would be hard to hear that message and then vote to continue funding Planned Parenthood, which is in the business of killing human beings at early stages and trading in body parts. Uh, so they got the message, hopefully. It was interesting to see that uh, I believe 100% of the members of Congress stood up and applauded when he said that. I don't really understand how you could applaud that and then continue the funding of Planned Parenthood. I think I would like to have seen him speak a little more specifically to that issue. And uh, speaking of that, we want to talk more about that with you in just a couple of minutes. Was the Pope perhaps uh, too euphemistic uh, and, and being diplomatic rather than spelling some things out in terms of social policy? We'll talk about it more with you gentlemen in just a second. Meantime, as the Pope continues his historic visit to the United States, a lot of Americans still ask, who is Pope Francis? And as always, Newsmax got you covered. Learn more about Pope Francis and his humble rise to the Vatican in the book, Francis, a Pope for Our Time. You can get this special offer right now by going to Newsmax.com slash Pope or by calling 1-800-203-7047. Learn about the personal experiences that shaped the pastoral commitment of Pope Francis to society's most underprivileged and disenfranchised with this hardcover biography from Newsmax. And again, you can order it right now by calling the phone number on the screen or going to Newsmax.com slash Pope. Our conversation will continue after this. Even in the developed world, the effects of unjust structures and actions are all too apparent. Our efforts must aim at restoring hope, righting wrongs, maintaining commitments, and thus promoting the well-being of individuals and most peoples. With Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth back with you on Newsmax Prime. Pope Francis there during his historic address to Congress outlining ways that people must work together to face the challenges the entire world confronts today. Yeah, Pope Francis is the first pontiff to ever address Congress in a joint session. He covered a number of issues like violence in the name of religion as well as poverty and hunger. The Pope urged Congress to help heal the open wounds the contemporary world faces. For more concerning this historic day, let's continue our conversation with the chaplain at MIT, Father Dan Maloney, and the editorial page editor for the Colorado Springs Gazette, and writer for the National Catholic Register, Wayne Logason. Father Dan, back to you. Before the break, uh, I just wondered aloud, we understand diplomacy and subtlety, but especially when it comes to social issues, 
Could the Pope have been a bit more candid and forthright talking about the right to life and traditional marriage? I, I think he didn't want to do that. I think, I mean, maybe it's diplomatic. It might have been, though, as he's been trying to do, is to talk about some things that have been dear to his heart that haven't been addressed as much. Like, one of the things he kept hitting on was this notion that we need to overcome uh, divisions in society and create a, a society where we talk to each other and respect each other and dialogue with each other. He used the word dialogue a bunch of times. And I think that he's trying to, to, to get beyond. He said he didn't want us to talk about where uh, everything was either good or evil, uh, you know, uh, uh, sinful or, 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 or not. I mean, trying to sort of take away some of these polarizing issues and reframe them as issues of concern that we all have to have as part of co coming from our heart. There's a way to approach that he was trying to get to. I don't know that he was as effective as if, but I think if you come out and said, uh, you must pass the bill that defunds Planned Parenthood, I'm not sure that would have been an appropriate intervention for a pastor into the, the nature of politics. We can know, we can you know, take what he's told us and then think about it ourselves as, as Americans um, and then try to apply it to the circumstances we have before us. As a pastor and as the Pope and as a religious leader, he has to lay out some principles and then let us come up with the details of them in our own co cultural context. I think that's what he was trying to do. And I, I, I think that a lot of people took away from it. It was, that might be ambiguous. That's the, that might be a critique of it, but um, I don't know that he had a, uh, I think he had a home run with what he was trying to do and I think he accomplished it very well. Well, let me go back to what you were saying, Father. You said, you know, he didn't say it specifically. He didn't address abortion, but Wayne, I want to ask you, do you think his address to Congress will in some way influence legislation to defund organizations like Planned Parenthood? I think I suspect, it's good. I suspect that he won't, ch that no one will change their mind um, about, I don't think that was the, about that sort of thing, but the details right before them, I'm not sure that anyone's going to change their mind because of what he said. I think he was appealing to a, uh, a, no, a different way of thinking about politics as about our common good and especially about those of our society and the unborn are among them uh, when, as are the elders. And Wayne, what are your thoughts? I think it could have a, a significant influence, but it depends how it is used from this point forward. And I think Father is right. <clears throat> you know, he talks, talks a lot about global warming and climate change. He doesn't say, you know, go pass a cap and trade bill. So he was avoiding specifics. He wasn't trying to set a legislative agenda. But now if Republicans who want to defund Planned Parenthood know how to take his message and use it in the right way, I think they can build on it. And I think it will be influential. And uh, Wayne, I'm curious because uh, in this temporal world, as the editorial page editor for the Colorado Springs Gazette, I was struck, and again, uh, maybe confessional time concerning the theme. Obviously, I served in Congress as a Republican, but I saw former colleagues from the Democratic Party have the temerity two days ago to put together a televised message to the pontiff inviting him to embrace their legislative agenda. Was that wise protocol or sound politics? Well, you know, don't be surprised by anything that the Democratic Party does. I mean, they, the Democratic Party knows how to win, and that's what they like to do, and, and Republicans could learn quite a bit from them. It, was it appropriate? I don't know. I, you know, I'm not one to speak uh, very fluently on the propriety of what uh, politicians in Washington do. I think it was probably somewhat effective, perhaps. I, you know, I, don't, know, I don't know whether he ever heard that message or not, but it was effective in that the public heard it. So they, they used the occasion to as a major mess messaging opportunity quite effectively, I think. Father, I just want to ask you real quickly, we have about 20 seconds left. Do you see this pope as a uniting force? I think today he was much more of that than I think. When we see him through the media, it always they highlight the things that divide. Uh, and I think today he was trying to be a uniter, and, and, and that's why he was tying together all the various parts of uh, the things he mentioned in the speech, where you know he said that uh, both we should be oh, you know about business. Business is important. Technology is important, and yet we should also think about the environment and 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 coming together, uh, fighting against our own self-interest sometimes, or laying that aside in order for the common good. He's trying to do all those different things together, and I thought it worked very well, at least in the speech today.
We will have to end it there. Father Dan Maloney, chaplain at MIT, and Wayne Logason, the editorial page editor for the Colorado Springs Gazette. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. Mindful of the scriptural admonition, you must be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. We'd like to have your comments on what you just heard. You can get those comments to us by logging on and going to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments.